And we are back. So as you just found out, if you were, you've been tuning in, uh, we just announced uh, the new podcast, uh, Event Brew. So that crew is very exciting. We're going to flip the script a bit. Uh, we've got our next guest here, Mark Catuno, who is, it's your first time at IMAX. My first IMAX. So right. Woo. So we've, we've got an IMAX virgin here, which is very exciting. Um, so, you know, a lot of times our guests have been coming to IMAX for years. So it's nice that we can get someone who has a fresh perspective. Um, so tell us a bit about your first experience and tell us a bit about what you do, why you're here. Sure. So I was actually really shocked. You know, I go to a lot of biz bashes, PCMA, ILEAs, um, and I think it's great to be able to, you know, have a lot of destination management companies um, and to be able to also, you know, see multiple different types of vendors in the same categories. Um, my company, MC Event Consulting, we um, specialize in registration and event management. Um, and we are now branching into the safety spectrum and being able to help facilitate management of safety and incorporating that to the guest experience and also internal experiences. So we're here to be able to network. We have a lot of different clients here also um, and planners and to just help grow our brand. Um, so I really would like to thank you so much for having me on the show. Of course, of course. And you know, one of the things that we really wanted to talk to you about is the, is the safety and security, right? Because this is a very hot topic right now. So it's exciting to hear about new technology and new vendors and stuff who are focused directly on this. So tell us a bit about um, your background and, and how you're what you're doing in this area. Sure, so I'm currently getting a double master's at American Military University in Homeland Security and in crisis emergency planning. Um, I already have one certificate in FEMA management in Alice active shooting and all my OSHA certifications. Um, what I'm looking to, and my coding team is actually currently building for me, is a management system that is HR um, style. So we are looking to be the company that onboards all freelancers um, to an event to be able to um, go through the correct protocol on understanding that full event. I can't understand the amount of events I've personally been on that don't have, you know, knowledge on, you know, what do I do? You know, I was just on an event a few weeks ago and they, I was literally was thundering and lightning and didn't even know where I should shelter in place. You know, I'm hearing on the radio, shelter in place, great, where, you know? Um, so we're creating a product that, you know, we are focusing on every aspect of the process for the internal employee and then rectifying that to the guest experience also. So our first product launch is going to be integrating to Boomset actually and it will be backed in Salesforce. We are creating an app for other companies to be able to buy in Salesforce's system and you would import your contractors. They would get an onboarding link, they would sign their contracts, payroll, and from there then you're going to be going into a learning management system that my company is going to be designing per event and working with the safety directors of that event to execute every information that somebody should know about that event. So by doing that and ensuring that they went through those modules, their actual employee badge will not issue until they do that. And that's the portion that no other company has been able to design something that there's a check and balance in place. So when they get on site and say, well, we didn't you know, um, get our badge yet. Well, did you go through your proper protocols? So all their um, tax information will be collected. We want to be able to make it a turnkey process to onboard people, but also in a safety matter. So when you get on site, Everybody knows what's going on at that event. And you know, from an event manager perspective, I like that my staff is already now briefed on that event. And also we're creating a system where you can also mass message people. God forbid a crisis and communication system comes up. Now you're tied into one system with everyone's contact information in one spot. You know, a lot of events, you know, and you know, um, Chat42, formerly Sancio, it's a great product for attendees, but they're hasn't been built internally for the teams. So how do you, you know, besides just radio itself, how do you get your messages out to teams quickly, efficiently, you know, and Alex, I know that's what you specialize also, <laughs> you know, in talking about from the attendees perspective, but how does that internally work with your team itself? So we're looking to conquer those challenges and be able to manage teams more correctly because we feel that, you know, there's a loss in management with that. So, Brant, coming from the AV side, I mean, you're contracting out constantly and working with teams on site. You know, from that perspective, how is something like this beneficial? Well, I mean, my mind is, is spinning in a bunch of different directions on this. And, and I'm curious to know 
um, you know, is there an opportunity for vetting there as well? That as we're looking at staff, you know, as we're looking at make, not only making sure that they know all of the important things uh, that go along as far as crisis communications and things like that, but and also, you know, one of the things that we talk about in our cybersecurity chats is making sure that, you know, you're understanding things like confidentiality agreements and, you know, I mean, the number Absolutely. of times, I've been in this business 20 years, I've had to sign two confidentiality agreements and the amount of like, really important sensitive data <laughs> that I've been in possession of in that time is much more than those two, you know, two instances. So that's kind of where my mind went yeah. to. Is there any, is there any intention to so include that in that? The system we're looking to build is customized to each client. I am a very big person under NDAs. All my contractors that work to me go under NDA and confidentiality is a very thing against our clients. You know, when you come on as a client of MC Event Consulting, we even have a clause in there about confidentiality. So we want to be able to create a system that works with your legal team that customizes everything so that it fits your brand and what you expect. If you want to be able to have them upload their OSHA certificates, you know, um, CPR certifications, we also want to be able to develop a system to be able to place people correctly to say, well, we have people that are CPR certified here, here, and here. And we've also vetted their CPR certifications are acting and up to the standards of the state that you're in. So by, you know, creating these different experiences per each guest experience for that company, you know, it's not a one fit model. And by also, you know, my experience of being a coder and having a custom coding team, we can tweak that per each company. We also want to be able to, you know, have a company come to us and say, just manage the whole process. So if you just want us to be the management company and onboard, vet your staff and interview and go through the whole process, it's just a handoff experience and we're handling payroll and the whole process for you too, which takes a lot of work out of the whole experience also. The, the, the other half of that that I want to ask about then is extending this to venue staff, to the AV staff and things right. like that, where, you know, I've heard horror stories of fire drills where, you know, they take people down the stairs and then it's locked. And it's like, oh no, oh, this wasn't the place? Oh, okay, no, oh, okay, I thought this was the stairs we were supposed to use. And that's like as part of the site visit and things like that. So, you know, how do we extend the, um, you know, the capabilities of the app and things like that to people that are also on our team, but not necessarily directly on our team? Yeah, and I think that would be, you know, we would be willing to open a section in it where it would necessarily not open up for payroll collection information and it would just be more for that education experience and that would be different pricing to onboard that specific user instead of somebody that we're gathering payroll information store but that's something absolutely i feel every single person that steps foot on site an event should go through our vetting system to be able to know that you know, from an event and safety standpoint, don't you feel better that everyone met compliance for your event? That, you know, you feel, you know, that, you know, God forbid something did happen. You have now a protection to say, well, we did educate, you know, our staff to the best of our ability. And that's, you know, when stuff goes down, everybody wants to hear that you did the most you can. You know, one of the models I like to use, especially with my clients, is my guests buy with confidence. So when somebody buys a ticket to an event, and you know, we all know the horror stories of Friar Festival and stuff, they did not buy with confidence. They bought with confidence and was let down. So, you know, you want your guests to be able to experience a confident that, you know, safety is up to where it needs to be. Water, food, beverage, and space capacity. Well, you know, that's our next step also, is moving into, you know, inventory management and moving into asset management and being able to really capacitize on every different portion of the event so that experience you know is where it needs to be you know you never want to let your guest experience down because then you're trying to gain those guests back after trust experience alex i know this is also a subject that's, that's close to your heart these yeah. days especially um i'm curious for for both of you um how do we balance readiness preparedness and making sure that our you know attendees feel comfortable and safe with also not turning every event into uh the takeoff of an airplane where it's like okay the safety mm -hmm. exits are to the back we have to do this in the event of an emergency i want you to know how do we find a balance in that so i think one of the things that i talk about especially in crisis communications is making sure the three-step process right first you're auditing your vulnerabilities and you're creating a plan but the third and probably the most important step is knowing your plan you know i sit with these groups um i do the certificate program with mpi and the last part of that program is actually going through a real-time exercise and i give them 30 minutes to create a plan based on a brief about this fictional event and they have just 30 minutes to create a plan but then for the next hour, we do a real-time exercise. 
Well, because they just created the plan, they know the plan really well. It's, it's a refresher thing. So the modules that you're talking about are really exciting for that because from a volunteer perspective and a staff perspective, to make sure that the people who are going to be executing actually know the information and it's not sitting in some binder yes. back of the office, right? Like you hear these horror stories and you're like, well, no one ever told us about it. We had a plan, but no one knew it, right? <laughs> We had a plan, but the doors were locked. <laughs> right, right. So I, I think that that's one of the exciting things, and I think it does. I'm glad you used the word trust because I think it does come down to trust. We trust that when we're attending an event um, that our staff and our volunteers are – that they know these things, right. right? And it's hard to get that trust back when it fails. And oftentimes you ask a volunteer or someone at an info desk for information they have no idea. <laughs> So. And I think that, you know, it's just the start, you know, where because it's a learning development system, we can then grow it to, well, executive management needs to take these classes and, you know, our other levels, because, you know, we live in such a world where also it's technology, you can update, you know, let's just say within 24 hours, we need to add a new module or add a new question. It's very easy on the fly. And because everything's in one place, you're being able to, you know, be so diverse, you know, and our goal is to be able to partner with every ticketing company. You know, um, I just had a great conversation with Boomset and my relations and, you know, being a consultant for them, you know, they are just the start, but we are looking to team up with everybody. We want to be able to be diverse because, you know, we live in a ticketing world that is diverse. We are going to also be launching our own ticketing system. Um, so that, you know, if people wanted our white glove service of just doing everything for the whole event, we can service that, you know, and then, you know, our latest part of that is our travel brand where, you know, staffing confirmations, hotel management will all be part of one system. So, you know, that when, you know, contractor comes on site, they know everything about that. You know, you never want to hear the words, well, I don't know. That's the most frustrating experience as an event manager, especially that we all put such effort into the information that we have. At least it's all in one place now. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mark, thank for being you. on the show. And enjoy the rest of your first IMAX. It's thank very you. exciting. Thank you. Yes, I'm excited. to finish walking the floor. And uh, for, for anyone watching, where's the best place they can get more information? Sure. You can go to mceventconsulting.com. And also our social is mceventconsulting. And my handle is at Mark Catuno. Great. Excellent. Thanks so much. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark.